So um, I was at the uh, Sheffield University Air Symposium that uh, Urban Flows organised uh, earlier this summer, and I learned there that the uh, air pollution that we're exposed to in this city is equivalent to smoking a cigarette every day. Now, I've uh, I've never smoked in my life. In fact, I, I love to keep fit and um, love to do the park run on a Saturday morning. Can anyone guess the park? Hillsborough. Well done. Very good. Um, so, uh, so that's me running there. And I um, earlier this year, I noticed that my park run times were slowing down, and I was starting to get more out of breath when I was exercising. I went to get this checked out at the at the doctors and was sent for tests and to cut a long story short I was diagnosed with lung cancer. Um, rolling forward a few weeks, um, actually the day I started my treatment which is a uh, an anti-cancer drug that I take every day, um, I read about this campaign in the Times newspaper called Clean Air for All and I learned about the link between air pollution and uh, and serious illnesses like lung cancer, and, uh, and particularly learnt about the, the damage that uh, air pollution can do to children's health. Uh, and I started to think, I wonder if I can use my story to make a difference in this area. And, uh, and I don't want my children to be growing up breathing the same dirty air that I have been doing. So I suppose that's what's led me to, to stand in front of you today. Um, so, I guess this is a, a, a familiar era image, but not all air pollution is as uh, obvious as this. Most of it we can't see or, or smell, but it's there and it's doing damage to our health. Um, there's going to be people in the room who know a lot more than I do about this. This is from a, some publicity that the City Council have put out. Um, but, but for those who don't know, the, the main problems with our air pollution, as far as, as I understand them, are nitrogen dioxide, much of it coming from older diesel vehicles, and, uh, and particulate matter, uh, fine particulate matter, which, um, uh, <coughs> as well as coming from vehicles and factories, is not just things that we burn, it's things like uh, road surfaces, uh, brake pads, and those sort of things. Now, uh, ignore the, uh, the banner across the top of this, uh, <laughs> this headline here. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the main headline there is pretty stark. Every organ in our body can be affected by, by what air pollution does. Um, just to go back, the um, nitrogen dioxide uh, can uh, can get into our airways and speed up lung disease. Fine particulate matter can get deep into our lungs and block oxygen absorption. I'm just going to rattle through a few things now in terms of the other health effects. Uh, babies in polluted areas are born with smaller heads. Um, there is a uh, emerging evidence that IQ levels can be affected. Um, adults who are exposed to pollution uh, are more likely to suffer from depression and dementia. Children exposed to pollution are more likely to develop asthma. A study has shown that children living near major roads were 50% more likely to develop asthma. And, uh, and this risk can persist into adulthood uh, with breathing problems being higher in polluted areas. Children in polluted areas are shown to have stunted lungs. They're four times more likely to have lung problems as adults. Lung function de declines quicker in adults living near busy roads. 3,000 cases of lung cancer every year linked to long-term exposure to polluted air. Uh, there's evidence that it's affecting obesity through chronic tissue inflammation. Uh, Adults living near busy roads are more likely to develop diabetes. Uh, children are shown to have increased insulin resistance. Uh, and this even starts in the womb, where exposure to polluted air can lower birth, rate, birth weight and uh, cause premature birth. 
and particulates can actually cross the placenta to hamper fetal growth. It, it all sounds pretty bleak, but, um, but things are improving and things are being done, and it's encouraging to see such a group here uh, this evening to address this issue and talk about this issue. But I think things need to, that, that change needs to uh, increase and accelerate. So what can be done? This is the uh, Public Health England's uh, uh, hierarchy of intervention, and, uh, and I guess some of this might be touched on later. The, the most important thing to do is to prevent. It's about uh, reducing or eliminating emissions, uh, failing that mitigation where we reduce concentrations, uh, or finally avoid where we uh, avoid individual exposure. In terms of reducing, um, these are some of the city council's initiatives and um, uh, things that are put out on Twitter, promoting car sharing, uh, when you change your vehicle, go to a more environmentally friendly one, don't idle, That's, but you'll see these signs around schools, um, switching your engines off, it's amazing how many people happily sit with their car engines running, uh, not going anywhere. Um, these are the sort of things that can be done to reduce, and I'm sure there are more. Um, I'd love to uh, uh, explore opportunities. I know Sam's in the room now, um, talking about driver behaviour. When I um, I worked in in Doncaster when there was that uh, uh, fuel blockade in the early 2000s. Anyone remember that? And we all drove at 56 miles an hour down the motorway and got about 50% more out of our tank than, than, at, than at other times. Uh, and I, you know, if we had a telematics firm in the, in the city who could uh, provide the technology for that, then, um, then it'd be great to, to assess driver behavior and encourage people to uh, drive more fuel efficiently. Um, this is the thing that's been, oh no, this is the clean air zone. So consultation closed on this last week. Um, this is what the this is the, the fairly blunt instrument that the city council are using to uh, reduce particularly nitrogen dioxide and implementing those charges on uh, on vehicles that uh, will hit the <coughs> inner ring road in the city. So that's likely to come in in 2021. This is what's been mentioned already. Um, the uh, the, the green screens that are going up at Hunters Bar Primary School, that's an image I found from a school in London. This is about reducing concentrations and protecting children from some of the worst of the, the emissions that are, that are out there. Uh, finally, avoiding uh, and minimising exposure. I suppose if we uh, are able to access real-time data on, uh, on what levels of pollution there are, and where that pollution is, then we can modify our behaviour. Um, maybe we could get notifications out to vulnerable groups to say, stay at home or, um, or take a different route to, uh, to avoid uh, exposure to the pollution. So I'm, um, I'm on the beginning of this journey, just gaining an understanding of what, uh, what the problem is, what risks it poses to health, and uh, what can be done about it. Uh, and I'm keen to provoke debate and catalyse activity. Um, but I'd particularly be interested in moving from uh, understanding the data and gathering the data to actually uh, affecting change, whether that's through using new technologies or particularly in changing people's behaviours. Um, air pollution contributes to uh, up to 500 deaths a year in Sheffield and and we really do need to address this problem. The clean air zone is part of that, but I think we need to do uh, much more. And uh, ultimately, I think what's required is a change of behaviour across the whole population in the city uh, to, uh, to, see the, to, to see things change. So as, as technologists, as innovators, entrepreneurs, academics, um, go to work in finding solutions and, uh, and developing new business models and developing new technologies, but also a challenge as individuals and as citizens to, uh, to understand that we're all part of this problem and uh, we can all be part of the solution 
as well. I'll just leave you with a quote. Um, Professor Paul Cosford from Public Health England is somebody I have uh, connected with. He's also been treated for lung cancer. Um, but this is part of the forward he wrote to a recent paper that Public Health England put out. Um, and I invite you to join him and join me in this effort to tackle the problem. Thanks for listening.